How you going? Welcome to Ben's Lab. Do you believe in life on other planets? Because I do. Uh, it seems uh, that our galaxy is getting quite crowded as uh, seemingly every second week a new planet is being discovered. And in fact, recent estimates have put the number of planets that will be found in our galaxy uh, or that exist in our galaxy at about 100 billion. Can you believe that? Now, panspermia is an old theory which gives comets and asteroids a lot of the credit for life occurring on our planet. How that you ask? Well, it breaks down like this. Uh, basically, many of the uh, raw materials and building blocks of life, as well as a lot of water, were delivered to Earth uh, in the form of comet and asteroid impacts uh, during its formative years. Now, I really have no idea how true this is, but it sounds pretty reasonable to me. But could the same thing happen in reverse? How's that, uh, Ben, I hear you ask? Well, uh, let me show you uh, what I mean as we explore the possibility of life on other planets here in Ben's lab. Long, long ago, Earth, the Moon, the planets, and even the Sun were all just dust, coming together from a huge cloud of primeval gas and matter called a molecular cloud. This cloud contained all the materials needed to produce the Sun and planets, but a little bit was left over, primeval fragments of a new baby solar system. Some of these fragments became asteroids and dwarf planets, others became comets, wandering pieces of ancient rock and ice, moving through the solar system. A well-known example of a comet is 67P visited recently and studied up close by the Rosetta mission and Philae lander. Now, comets are special. 67P was found to harbour some very special compounds, molecules called precursor compounds. In this case, the molecules were organic or carbon containing, and some were precursors to important organic molecules such as amino acids and DNA. In Earth's earliest days, the planet was thought to be something like hell. There was no place for life, and yet here we are, all of us. Somehow, life on Earth took off. Some researchers believe raw materials for life may have been delivered to Earth by comets, sprinkled far and wide like a chef going nuts with the salt and pepper. Now, as far as we know, Earth is the only planet in the entire universe known to definitely harbour life. I've spoken briefly about the conditions for life in some other episodes, but there are a lot of other worlds out there, both in our solar system and beyond, and there's a lot of stuff floating around in space. We owe our existence to such a collection of stuff, coagulating and sticking together to form the sun and planets. Europa is the fourth largest moon of Jupiter. It's a little smaller than Earth's moon and the 15th largest object in the solar system. Why am I suddenly talking about Europa? Because astrobiologists, people who examine the possibility of life on other planets, believe that Europa may harbour it. It's believed to possess an ocean 100 kilometres deep beneath an icy shell several kilometres thick. This ocean is believed to be salty, like our own. Now this is important because the minerals and chemicals dissolved in seawater form an important backbone of deep sea ecosystems concentrated around hydrothermal vents. On Earth, these vents are practically bursting with life. These vents on Earth are geothermally heated, relying on heat from deep within the Earth. The ecosystem in this European ocean may be heated by Jupiter, this is because the gas giant's gravity tidally massages the moon, creating heat from frictional forces within the moon. Just imagine what probes to Europa will find when they eventually take a peek beneath that ice. What I wouldn't give to see it. It's at least possible that around 3.8 billion years ago, Earth was seasoned with some of the ingredients for life while cosmic passes by. But could it have happened in reverse? Could this have happened elsewhere in the solar system? Life on Earth by and large, is simplistic in structure and function. It has spread to almost literally every corner of our blue-green marble, and it continues to pop up in strange places. Some of them are far too hostile for humans or more complex life forms to survive in. One of the main mechanisms this simple life has used to conquer the globe is simple dispersal. This could be a sneeze, distributing countless thousands, millions of freshly muted cold viruses far and wide. It could be a gentle breeze, scattering thousands of fungal spores across the forest floor. Many simple organisms spread themselves far and wide by hitching a ride on other organisms. Countless examples exist in nature of organisms that use others to do the work for them. Plants create seeds that are ingestible animals and spread in droppings. Bees not only distribute pollen, they also often carry other organisms. 
one guy, etc. It's in new locations. Cats and corn are two examples of very different organisms which have conquered the planet alongside humanity by making themselves favourable to human beings in various ways. Most of these mechanisms have developed over time, becoming the done thing. But other times throughout their history of life, species have been flung far and wide by accident. Could Earth seed other planets with life? Imagine if places like Europa have already been seeded with life, not by comets or rogue asteroids, but by Earth. The world's eyes are on a piece of the ancient world, Rome to be exact, a spear tip broken away from its wooden haft and buried in alien ice 628 million kilometres from the Eternal City. How did it get there 